Hey guys, I'm going to try to follow up some of my Power BI dashboard videos with a, another take on how to approach some of the progress management distribution of information. But this time, instead of using a Power BI dashboard, we're actually going to use just plain old vanilla HTML for the website. And there's a lot of value added that you can get out of a website, and I'll kind of dive right into it. This is a site that I've set up, I'm just called IPEXnet. Um, IPEXnet is actually me, it's nice, my nice little handle and it's a bit of my management, management approach to our entire business. It is integrated project execution, it's what I stand for, it's what I believe in and it's how I pursue. Uh, what we got, a nice little menu up at the top with a bunch of tabs, we got a homepage. We've got a couple of links to some key items. All right, now this is all just PDF stuff. You're going to have a uh, current schedule. It's going to be grouped by contracts. You're going to have some baseline PDFs. Maybe you have a link to some Aconex stuff that you want, some material management supply data, uh, just some key front page links. Nothing really too smart here, but let's dive into perhaps some of the engineering. And got a little tab for engineering, project summary. See what we see. Oh, here we go. Uh, we've got four projects. We've got some budget man hours, earned man hours spent. We've got a percent complete productivity. These are just normal metrics that you'd probably see in either your engineering progress dashboard or even your engineering progress database or maybe even in your schedule. Uh, but here we're just putting it on a website so anybody in your corporation can go in and click and see. We can go dive in. We've got one that's 99.95%. .95%. Let's go dive into that to see some of the nice bells and whistles that we've got. Discipline, all these are standard uh, civil engineering, civil drafting, uh, mechanical engineering, mechanical drafting. We've got budget. Obviously, this is going to be the sum of all the deliverables underneath that specific account. Earned, all, all the deliverables will have a percent complete. Sum up to a, an earned value for that to get an overall percent. Uh, spent hours, obviously, you're going to be booking your timesheet into some, S, we'll call that SAP, because that's actually probably where it is, and that will be coded into some structure, so we can actually get an idea of how many spent hours we have, how many earned hours, a percent complete, and a productivity. Uh, I've actually got one, I've got a little test in here, so there's actually some mechanical drawings. Click on that. And here we're actually seeing a WBS view. So this is all the WBS is for that specific discipline of mechanical engineering. And each WBS is some drawings. Again, also a budget, an earned, and here we actually have an SAP actual. We'll get back to that because there's little links on that. We're gonna see where that goes. We've got one that says 80%. We've got 10 drawings in there. And let's go click on that, see what we see there. Here is the actual deliverable level. And, and what we got, you know, there's 10 items in here, a bunch of hours, there's actually one that's got zero. Yeah, maybe there's a budget shift or a deleted drawing, or maybe we just forgot to put hours on it. But nonetheless, the interesting thing here, everything's at 80%. This is actually a very smart system because I can actually go into an edit mode. And this is where magic happens. In an edit mode, all my percent completes, percent completes come up. And if I want to make these 100%, I just key in 100%. This is a nice little Ajax feature where it automatically is making calls to a database and updating it live. And so I can just tab through these and just say, update them all to 100%. And if I hit refresh, Oh, the percent's now 100. Now that's actually live in the whole system. That's the absolute power of having systems where people can edit data. Because now you can go back and all my screens are now going to be updated to 100%. And that's going to be it's live. Anybody in the system, there's no really need to do a weekend or a month. And you're actually managing your job live as it happens. I noticed the, I mentioned that there's the spent hours. These are very interesting. They're just out of SAP because obviously the function that's going to be functional manager that's managing this particular discipline wants to know who's booking where. Click that and here you'd actually see names. You can see what uh, week they booked their time, 
how many hours they book to. This is not to a deliverable level. Sometimes you can go to that. This is more of just a high level, well, just to a WBS level. And um, yeah, that's really what you get for your engineering. Um, some other little aspects on there. You can regroup them by discipline. You can have all your deliverables grouped by a contract. You can have all, all your deliverables will be mapped into a Primavera schedule. And if you have some uh, specific requests, in this one there was a, a controls engineering uh, special. You know, this wasn't really a, all the controls items were all grouped under one WBS. And so the specific lead wanted to have some subgroupings. And so we actually made a some little, you know, custom group. And he also wanted to see the specific schedule ID. And this was a nice little aspect. So obviously all the deliverables are mapped to a schedule ID, but here we're actually showing it so they can see uh, explicitly what it is. And you can actually click on that and you can actually get into your Primavera data. It's actually a bad one. Let's go click on another one. Yeah, so in the Primavera data, you can actually see the activity, the start date, the end date. And here you can actually see what the predecessors and successors are. And you can actually just tag through or just flip through all the schedule just doing click, click, click. It's absolutely amazing to have some of this easy uh, insight into what you're looking at for a manager as opposed to looking at even a dashboard, trying to get information out of a Primavera schedule or even your engineering database. You just take all that information put it onto a project website, easy as. Construction, very similar to engineering. We've got our projects. Obviously the engineering was 100% complete, so hopefully we're um, in the depths of construction. And indeed we are, we're 41%. Very similar, we've got budget, we've got earned, we've got spent, and mapped to a project, some productivity. Same as, we've got this all linked into contracts. This is a an EPCM view. So it's not really a self-performed job, this is a, in the world that I deal with, it's about a mega project. We're talking billions of dollars, millions of man hours of work. And so you really, you write a contract to a specific contract, you go deliver it, and then you're managing that contract. So specifically here, we got a bunch of um, contracts. This is all just generic information, uh, but nonetheless, it follows some structure of some early civils works into some structural mechanical work. And then maybe some, this actually looks like it's got some rail aspect as well. All this information, again, is keyed into a detailed deliverable. As opposed to going into your engineering progress system, this information is going to go into your progress system. Uh, so we can just go click one of these guys. And now we're looking at effectively QMR data. And so all your QMR line items, again, linked into a schedule ID. We've got some budget, we've got a percent complete and the earned. Again, this is just earned value. So it's the percent complete um, calculates the earned. Go back. Here again, we have spent hours for each contract. So the contractor is going to give us some probably a weekly report where they're going to tell us how many hours they've spent. And I've misaligned my percent complete. So the 41% should go in the percent, not the, uh, not the spent column. Interesting data. You can't have a website or an integrated project system without having something that says cool or beta. Here we are back in our cool data. And this is actually some commissioning information. And so commissioning, again, everything's linked to a schedule ID. We've got all this information sitting in different systems. All you got to do is put a schedule ID in that field. And when you bring across the data, you can pull it into some smart format. Um, this is a construction verification activity. Obviously, you'd probably have successors in terms of some additional commissioning steps, but this is just for a construction verification. You'd have some subsystems. This is really primarily a, a system level. You'd have a number of tests. How many tests have you completed? Again, with commissioning, it's probably related more to counts in terms of your metrics for how far you are. And then this is linked to a schedule, so you know what a start date and an end date is. Click on it. And here we can actually see a subsystem level. This is actually linked, well, this was information out of a system called WinPCS and all commissioning systems are the, roughly the same. You've got a system, you've got a subsystem, you click on subsystem and then you're actually gonna get more into your uh, specific tag level or your um, equipment value, your cable, 
your instrument, your equipment number. But again, this is just, just dummy data, but your actual data would look something very similar to this. And in your system, you don't know if it's completed or if something is not completed, you get a little tag there. And obviously that's the one that was um, uh, right here is only 41 out of 42. Obviously within a website, you can do a lot of linking to PDF documents. So really within the schedule, obviously you saw there's some screens where you can click through the schedule. However, sometimes that distribution of information isn't very good. Sometimes you want just PDF views. So you'll set up some standard PDFs that you generate every week or every month from your schedule. Have the same naming convention, dump it into the folder, and as opposed to worrying about distributing that through emails or just having it for yourself on your own file, you create a website and you have links to those files. You put the document into the specific web server folder that you'd be uh, accessing. Now everybody in your project can quickly go to this website. When someone sends you a request, okay, can you send me a screen print of something or can you send me a schedule on something? You actually don't need to give it to them. You just send them to the URL of this website and that's really how it works. People are these days much better working with websites than they are with systems. And some of those thoughts are entirely in this IPEX net world that at least I try to live in. Project execution plan, obviously you should have some good links into your planning documents, some of your uh, procedures, and you would actually have links. Again, these would just go into PDFs and you could open the PDF and then view it. Really, this is just a sneak peek of how I view project execution and a nice little view of how you could use a project website to facilitate your aspirations to have a more integrated project execution. Thanks a lot, guys, and 